If you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide to wire a dual voltage three-phase motor, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Keith from e Motors Direct, your go-to source for electric motors in Canada. By the end of this video, you'll know the ins and outs to get your motor up and running. Let's get started. First things first, safety is key. Make sure the power is locked out to avoid electric shock while you're wiring the motor. Before we even touch a wire, let's find the motor's wiring diagram. This is usually on the side of the motor, or sometimes it's inside the terminal box like this one here. The wiring diagram can also be found in the data pack, which you can download at emotorsdirect.ca. Some motors come with colored wires, which makes it a little easier to tell them apart. Many motors, like these from Tico Westinghouse, use numbered or labeled stickers on the wires instead of color coding. Each of these labels directly correlates to the wiring diagram. If labels are missing or unclear, use a continuity tester or multimeter to trace connections accurately. Most dual voltage three-phase motors come with nine wires in the junction box, usually labeled T1 to T9. If you have a motor that's not dual voltage, it's just 460 volt or just 575 volt, you'll only see three wires. The internal connections are already done. This tutorial applies to nine wire motors. These wires might all look the same, but they each have a specific role. Motors will be internally wound either star or delta. In a star connection, one end of each of the three windings is connected to form a common point known as the star point. The other three ends are connected to the three phase supply. This is also sometimes called a Y connection. In a delta connection, the windings are connected in a triangular shape. Each winding is connected between two phases of the supply, creating a closed loop circuit. You might see a star or a triangle on your wiring diagram. Depending on if it's a star or delta, the wiring will be different with 230 volt. With 460 volt, it doesn't matter if it's star or delta as the connections will be exactly the same. Let's wire the motor for 460 volt. You're connecting these lines from your VFD or starter to the lines in the motor. You'll connect T1 to line one, T2 to line two, and T3 to line three. Then connect T4 and T7, T5 and T8, and T6 and T9. You'll have three lines connected to your motor starter and three loose groups of two. These pairs need to be connected together to create external jumpers. These are the ends of each winding and we're connecting them together. These don't come connected from factory because this is a dual voltage motor and by keeping them disconnected, you can change the voltage based on your input. Now let's wire for 230 volt input star connection. First connect L1 to T1 and T7, L2 to T2 and T8, and L3 to T3 and T9. Then connect T4, T5, and T6 together. And let's not forget about the ground wire. This is a critical safety step. A loose ground wire can be dangerous, so make sure everything is tight. Attach the ground wire securely to the grounding lug inside the motor's junction box. Before closing everything up, I like to double check each connection and then do a quick rotation test. If the motor spins the wrong way, don't worry, just swap any two of the L1, L2, or L3 connections and it'll fix the rotation. And that's it. You've successfully wired your three-phase motor. Leave your questions in the comment section and hit the subscribe button if you wanna be notified when we post more content. And try eMotors Direct the next time you're replacing a motor. I'm Keith from eMotors Direct. Thanks for tuning in.